All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is what my kitchen s faucet will look like. Uh, who knew these things were so freaking expensive? My God. All this stuff with some fittings was, well, upwards of a couple hundred dollars. Should have bought that on, well, you know where, online. Anyways, uh, right now, I just drilled out the rest of these screw heads. I'm going to be removing this part. I'm going to work on this today. Reed is going to be doing what he does best. And uh, we're working on the sink and uh, the faucet. And we'll go through the water system in a second. Uh, we tried to go through that last night, but the uh, battery kept <laughs> crapping out or something. So uh, anyways, we're looking good here, getting all the systems in place and uh, making some serious progress. <laughs> what you're doing right now. Find the center side to side for the sink. Yep. And then I'm gonna put the faucet hole like uh, back a little bit because you don't want it too close to the sink, but you want it to be, you know, you don't want it to look nice. Right. So here we are. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> and great news, we we bought a bunch of uh, sink drains, but this one actually came with the drain. So if you happen to need a sink, uh, so far I recommend this, haven't used it yet, but Zoom. Seems like a good one. It's really pretty. That, of course, is really comes into play here. Function, size, pretty. I don't want to mess up Vanderboom's nice work. <laughs> I know, Eric. We don't want to mess up your sink. Uh, you know, sinkhole here. Right. Sinkhole. Okay, so that goes back a full inch. So I'll make sure. Oh, plenty. Plenty. So let's go. I'm not going right. There. So you're going back so you don't hit the lip don't and then enough the enough uh, clearance right. clearance to oh, clear yeah. it. All I do is, you know, I put it right in the middle of here. Yep. So I have plenty of room for the lip, right? Yep. And then side to side and center. Cool. Sounds good. Seems seems relatively easy. <gasps> oh my god, he's gonna cut it. Here goes nothing. There's the epoxy. <laughs> it helps to have a sharp bit. Yeah, sure would. This is not. <laughs> Just a pile of there we go. I was finally able to rip this out. Uh, not really sure what to do this time around. A lot of water comes in these, uh, especially this bot full bottom. Uh, step here, so it's tempting to put diamond plate maybe even on the full bottom part. I, I'm not sure yet. It's to be determined. Here we go. Here is the sink reveal. That's a good looking sink, dude. Yeah. Well, it's a faucet. Or, sorry, faucet. Yeah. That's what I mean. Goes with your good looking sink. Yeah, it does. So, uh, this one's like some, I don't know, magnetic uh, thing or something? I don't really know. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah, there's like the, the other fancy one that a lot of people have with like the coils and stuff, but you know, I wasn't really, wasn't really into spending $300 and this one looks just fine, but actually, I didn't want it to rattle. I gotta be honest with everyone. First and foremost, it was rattling like crazy, so there's no reason to rattle and, you know, have that whole part just be like a permanent slinky, so that's why we ended up going with this one. So, uh, now what are you doing, Reed? Well, a little pro tip, don't if you have something to do brand new, put the faucet in first and then the sink. Okay. Sounds good. Makes everything much easier. <laughs> so these are uh, some compression fittings and uh, we got some shark bites and hey, uh, I'll get them. All right, so Reed had me choose these. I'm not sure if the, it's the right choice or not for this application or not, but uh, that's that's what we have. So you just literally push that on. That's it. Wow. And so I, I went with the down angle ones, the right angle, ninety degree ones, instead of the uh, straight ones, because I said, well, if there's a hose coming off here, then we could do that. Mm -hmm. And. So, depending on what your setup is, you could do straights or 90s. Would you have done straights or 90s? Eh, it could go either way on this one. Yeah, true. Because you could loop it over and do that. Right. Or you can loop down and do that. Right. Which I think this would be 
more out of the way, but that also works. It just, so. yeah, it's, it's kind of six and one half dozen of another. Yep. Oh, we're gonna have to cut that out too? Mm hmm Ah, I see. Thanks to Vanderboom. <laughs> That's right. It didn't do me any favors. <laughs> well, actually, we're gonna have to take that issue up with the uh, cabinet guy, actually. Not, oh, no, not, not Vanderboom. Where? <laughs> Who's the cabinet guy? <laughs> the Mojo Bus. What? Yeah. <laughs> you probably didn't have your sink at that point, did you? Uh, I don't know when we got that thing. Possibly. I forget. Anyways, <laughs> so what we're doing, well, when I, when I say we, I mean Reed, because I'm, I'm learning from him. But uh, <laughs> we're just cutting out the, uh, the spot for the sink to go, because yeah. uh, that's a little bit in the way. And uh, a lot in the way. But yeah, so we we cut out some of this uh, stuff under here and then that. I forget what it's called, but you know, the little piece that goes across. All right, so uh, we, I uh, read, <laughs> uh, I'm watching and learning. Reed is installing the faucet and uh, there's a plate that went on first and then there was the part that threaded on and then what happens is it, you screw these things in and it creates a, uh, like a clamp from the, from the, it just pushes on the threads and holds itself in there, so now he's just gonna screw it right in. That's it. Walk us through what you're doing there, Mr. Reed. Just connecting the uh, water supply lines. Cool. Hot to hot, cold to cold. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to get me purple water again. Yeah. Can't tell you how many houses I've worked on where the plumber has reached, you know, reversed these things. Uh huh. You get it on there because the uh, left side is supposed to be hot. Yep. Right? Yep. And I can't tell you how many times I've been in where the right side was hot. <laughs> you install the sink and the, the client goes, it's backwards. <laughs> Crawl under the sink again. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, that was nice. These uh, little hoses will be hidden behind uh, uh, Mr. Sink right there. That's a good looking sink, by the way. It's gonna be a pretty sexy schooly, schooly kitchen sink here. Now these fittings. Uh huh. What people mostly do, which is a, you don't want to over tighten these. Okay. You want to get them snug, not like crazy, you know, hulkified. Right. And why is that? Well, they have a little rubber gasket on. Okay. And all you need is just a little bit of pressure on. Them. That's it. Yep. They don't need to be hulkified. By the way, Reed is a master at attention to detail, so he's got a little uh, hose bracket sort of thing. He's going to put that right onto the wall. Oh, it's out of your way. Mm hmm. Oops. And you don't want to get those too tight. Yep. Otherwise, it'll cut off uh, the supply just like the mains, huh? Right. So All make right. Make sure that you're bracket whatever you're using is wide enough to put that on there. Excellent. Nice and tucked away. Excellent, excellent. So the blending part of it is up here, right? Yeah. So the water, it comes up to here and goes back down and back up, huh? Yep. Interesting. That's exactly how it works. Huh. And then you put this on, this is the weight. That's a shake weight. <laughs> right. Exactly. Put this guy on there. It's like that and you just boop, huh. snap. Easy. That way this comes out, see? Oh, so it pulls it back down. Gotcha. See? Interesting. Okay. Boom. Very cool. Do you guys see what I see? I see a possible noise. So I got some of this uh, hose, pipe, whatever insulation stuff, so I'm just gonna put it on there. I'll put two of them. Alright, there we go. This little donut looking thing is the foam which is the uh, pipe hose insulation and uh, just put two pieces and uh, now you don't have any noise. Installing sink with reed. Take three. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to get it. This is goof off. It's great stuff. Yeah. It, it will eat through this. It will eat through paint. It will eat through plastic. It is not the kind of stuff you want to leave sitting around on something that you want finished. Right. Okay? But it cleans incredibly well, especially in steel. And why are you doing something like that, Mr. Reed? I am prepping this for silicone, which is going to be 
See how it's coming off? Yep. So I want as clean a surface as possible on this lip. Yep. I'm even going to do this to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. Just because I want to make sure that Vanderboom didn't leave any nice sawdust on the bottom of this. <laughs> just teasing, teasing, by the way. Okay. Yeah. So. So we get it nice and clean, and then. Does that smell good? Oh, it smells, it smells. <laughs> Don't you love the smell of goof off in the oh fall? Oh gosh, it, it'll, if you're not eating, then and you're in uh, an enclosed place, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it that, smells like acetone, basically. That, that will kill some brain cells, for sure. <laughs> Which explains so much now. All right, there you go. <laughs> so, this is what you need to install a sink. Wire, wood, two pieces of wood that go, that are smaller than your sink hole. Yep. One is for up top, and then you want to protect your countertop. Sweet. All right? Oh. Before I get ahead of myself, silicone sucks. Anybody who's used silicone knows that the less you have to wipe off, the better. So, what you want to do. And we don't know if that's silicone. It's a silicone base. Alright. I grabbed this, uh, uh, two products at the hardware store. Both Loctite. One adhesive sealant, marine grade, and then one clear silicone. So, conversely, we are also taping for silicone on the countertops. So, just remember guys, fail to plan. Plan to fail. Alright, now he's using a razor, a box cutter, to have a perfect line where the wood meets the metal. So you got your wire, right? Yep. Oh, I know what you're doing. <laughs> right when you did that, I figured it out. Nothing more than put that through the hole. Yep. I don't know what he's gonna attach the wire to yet, Where's but our, I, uh, silicone? we'll find out right here. Okay. So because I made all this nice blue tape everywhere, It does have a pretty nasty smell to it. I wish you had a cold bill on this, but whatever. Another general rule of thumb, you want to use a caulk gun for this. Gotcha. Just makes life a lot easier. Okay, let me... Yeah, even the other ones I have are not caulk gun silicones. <laughs> They're like the squeeze tube ones. Yeah? I don't know why. It's going to come out the top there. Because you want a liberal amount. Not a Republican amount. <laughs> <laughs> when I said that, how did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> We've been having some good banters back and forth. Okay. Another thing you want to do, make sure your hole's big enough. Okay. <laughs> Is that we are not trying to... There we go. Is that easier? It's, it's a lot out. easier. A lot easier. And this does not have to be perfect. This just has to be... A generous amount. A generous amount. Or a liberal amount. Yeah, this stuff does stink. It smells like... Like silicone. Uh, I don't know. Like it smells like... Like silicone. Like, like you dipped your head in... Like those glue sticks. When you're in elementary school. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Or it smells like silicone. <laughs> it just gets everywhere. Yes. And you want to make sure that you don't have any gaps. That's kind of the 
All right. And you can see why I put the tape on now. Yeah, yeah, it goes all over the place. And that is a pretty generous amount there. Yeah, a lot of this gets squeezed out. However, the thicker you put this on, Okay, I think we're good. Okay, awesome. So, I'll put that right there. Yep, paper towels are up there. <coughs> Alright, you want, you want me to give it a heave-ho and push it up there for you? Nope. So, I don't want to ruin Vanderboom's awesome job on right. the countertop. Eric, go ahead and thank him in the comments. <laughs> oh, that's how you're going to do it. Oh, that's so smart. Okay, so... Where Miles? Miles with the tiles. So, when this comes up, one side goes one side, the other side. Okay, just pull it up. Oh. Wait, 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 not too fast. I want to center this thing. Okay. It needs to go back this way. Yep. Oh, okay. I see. Yep. Right. Yeah, and Eric. Can you pull it hard? Okay, now twist the wire around each other. No, around, around itself. Loosely, not not too tight. But loosely. Okay, come on, get it tight. Wrap it all the way around. And then what we do? All right, now he's got the other piece of wood in there, and he's using like a double clamp or double twisty system. You basically. That is so smart. Oh, and then it's just wedged right there, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, now he's yeah. pushing it where it needs to be. So it looks like it needs to go back a little bit, huh? Just a little bit. This one's kind yep. of, yeah. It basically would just hold itself tight. Yeah. Again, this is it just holds itself to the sink, see? Nice. Now Oh. Ooh. This is how you get a nice clean. Ah. That makes sense. Makes so much sense right now. So that's why you put such a generous amount on there, so it squeezes out, and then you can. Yeah, just take it right off. Yep. You guys, get all this hooked up. Oh, uh, we got it mocked out right now. Cool. Undermount sink, one, two, three. Okay. Look at that. A little bit too far that way. Yeah. And then what he's doing is, is looking to, to balance this thing out here. So we just squeeze it over. Because no hole is actually perfect. Wait, it's a family show, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Does your stove fit? Yeah. It might have to cut out a little piece of the wood, but yeah, it fits right in there. So interesting. Huh. So this is how you uh, install an undermount sink for a school bus or not. It's pretty much universal anywhere. Then you just get silicone everywhere. <laughs> Lovely silicone all over the place. All right. right. Quite dumb. Not quite done. So now what we have to do is take all the tape off. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, if you leave the tape on there and it actually settles on there and you try to peel it off. Oh, it's going to get stuck, right? right? And you also don't want to leave the tape on too long because what happens is silicone will actually start to skin. Okay? And as soon as it starts to get like a little skin on it, um, 
putting the tape, it gets that little ripply effect. You ever seen a silicone yeah, line? Yeah, that's what that happened ripples? to my roof. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's why you, yep. while it's still really wet. I'm going to show you guys exactly what he's talking about when I took this uh, tape off of the elastomeric roof. It pulled that up, it bubbled, it didn't tear properly because there was about seven layers of, of roof paint. So there's several places where I'm going to have to uh, touch it up. So And there's some tape stuck under the paint. Okay. So this, we've been rolling this whole time, so this is about uh, three minutes in to the silicone drying so relatively immediately I'm guessing yeah. you gotta take it off. Yeah. And then we'll do one final little run through with our finger. Okay, awesome. Silicone gets everywhere. You can tell he's a huge fan of silicone. Everybody, send him your silicone. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, nice and clean. If you get a little bit in different areas, it comes off with some goof off. Mm -hmm. But you don't want it too near your lines. Interesting. All right, there we go. This is what we got so far. Yeah. This looks good. Inevitably, you always have that little spot. Yep. And again, you don't want to do this too far into the process. Yep. Because then you get little ripples. Yep. Start to booger up. All right. You don't want that. No boogers on your silicone. I had no idea silicone was strong enough to hold up all your water and your dishes and all the crap you throw in your sink. So next time, <laughs> uh, just remember. Boom. Nice. Excellent. Look at how nice this looks. That is super cool. Reed, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> water is ready to be tested. Water is ready to be tested. Water is ready to be tested. This is crazy. Yeah. Um, look at how clean this is. So this is the difference of, of if you saw my last bus, amateur versus professional. <laughs> Honestly, this is great, dude. I am super excited about this. Um, no more water to get, that gets trapped in the fill <laughs> from last time. Got a proper length. We got on the proper, you know, thingamajiggy over there. Got uh, city and gravity fill. This is what water systems wish they could be. And... So thank you so much, You're honestly. Welcome. I You're welcome. appreciate it. I don't even know how to repay you. So Yeah. So anyways, are we gonna test this thing? Well, you said you wanted to wait until tomorrow. Oh right, because of the sink. Because you well, can test it right now. No no no, because you said don't bump the sink. So I'm like, okay, let's not bump the sink. I'm trying to hold up to your <laughs> to what you told me here, you know? Right. So uh, tomorrow we will test this thing and uh, we will get water running. This is oh plus we don't have anywhere for the water to go. Except if we hold, put a cup there. Well, you got to hook up your 12-volt uh, pump still. True. And that's that's on you. Well, that's going to wait until the electricity goes in, which is going to be towards the... There it's going to be after this stuff. So, anyways... Well, we can always blow out the system, because we have that zerk over here that we put on there. Remember? Yep. Uh, yep, that's true. So, we can always blow out the system. Yep. So, anyways, this is what we got so far. This is looking absolutely incredible. I'm so happy. I want to show you what I've been working on. And not necessarily do a detailed instruction because you can see what I did and then <laughs> you, can, you can repeat. Uh, I put this stuff called seam sealer on all of the uh, edges and this is what it looks like. Uh, now the guys at Colorado Custom Coachworks use this blue tape, if you see right there in the corner, to make a clean little line. So I just kind of copied their technique and as you can see it's coming off nice and clean here. And seam sealer is a automotive uh, type thing. You can get it over at O'Reilly's or whatever. But uh, yeah, when you do the blue tape thing, look at how nice and clean it comes out. Yeah, so you got a nice little thing there. Nice little edge. And 
you know, looks nice and professional. And the reason I'm doing this is so uh, that no water goes in between the metals. I'm not sure if that was clear or not. <laughs> Compare it, contrast it to the windows. Not as professional as a job. But you know what, bus number three, I will definitely make it more of a professional looking job. All right, so Reed is putting in the final touches on the uh, on the tile here. Uh, Reed, are you? What are you doing for this part? Are you just going over and stopping there? Or are you going down? What are you thinking? Um, well, these will go across the top. Okay. And normally, what I do is put a piece of sawstone stone for okay. the curb to step on. Yeah. Um, but seeing as how we don't have a big piece of, you know what? Maybe go get a piece of tile and put it there. Yeah. To, uh, like one one big flat piece. Yeah. What time is it? Uh, not too late. Yeah, we can go to floor and decor and just get like a, a piece of white uh, tile. Okay. Or even just like a marble tile. It, like what? To, you know what? Maybe a piece of glass tile like this. Uh huh. Do one piece. Just one piece across, across, huh? Cool. I'm I'm up for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll do this up to the sides. Okay. I'm just getting ready to put uh, you know the final piece here and then just start rounding it up. Yep. I got gotcha. you. I gotta cut these out for the holes. Mm hmm. You know, so they, and then up there. Yep. That back yep. wall turned out nice. Sure did. So this whole th this whole thing came out really nice. Look at how <laughs> incredible this is. It's like it's gonna look clean even if it's dirty. It's, it's like one of those kind of bathrooms. Yep. So. That's the idea. <laughs> nice. Like tile that matches. Awesome. Awesome. This is the next day. Now, it has been a full 24 hours, but it's been about 20 hours. Close, Close enough, says Reed, as this thing falls to the ground. Just kidding. This thing's going to be absolutely awesome. Hmm? Nice. Didn't fall. Didn't fall. But um, we are in cooler than normal temperature for caulking to cure. And uh, it worked. So... Okay, we have to buff that out. Yeah. I think it would. What, is this just from the? Uh, uh, the from the cardboard. Cardboard. Are you kidding me? Huh. All right. Well, I got I, a little scuff on there. I, I will that. see Eric in a, a little while. I'm sure he has a. Uh... Oh, he has all the stuff here. Oh, okay, cool. He left everything here. Awesome. So yeah, we got a couple of things to buff out. Yeah, not a problem. So if you do use epoxy, maybe use a. Uh... Shoot, I don't even know what wouldn't do that. Some kind no. of microfiber cloth or something. Maybe. Cotton? I mean, I feel like anything pressed in would kind of, yeah. you know? And I, you know, so. I didn't think I'd do that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, however, much better than putting wood into this. Much, right. much better. Because <laughs> that would have a serious well, problem. This this will buff out. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we already have a, have a scratch here from something, too. This stuff is pretty delicate stuff there. So, yeah. I'm going to have to learn how to, how to fix these little imperfections because I have a feeling that these are not going to be the first ones Buffing. or the last ones. Buffing. Yeah.